There is a 16-year-old high school student in North Carolina. We have to thank our friends over at Lives of TikTok for this story. A 16-year-old high school student who is being punished for using the phrase illegal alien. His name is Christian. If you're watching the show rather than listening to it, you can see a picture of him. Looks like a nice kid, clean-cut kid. His hair's a little bit long, but it's okay. He's a teenage boy. Uh, He was suspended for three days after using the term illegal alien in an English assignment because the term is supposedly offensive and disrespectful. Now his record could be damaged. This could mess up his GPA. This could mess up up his academic record. Who knows? This might affect where he goes to college. Why? Because he used a term that is precise. This is the term that until very, very recently was used by our federal government. It's a term that is quite clinical, actually. Illegal means uh, not legal. Alien means foreigner. So illegal alien refers to people who are foreigners, who are citizens or subjects of a foreign state who come into our country illegally. What, what term would you like me to use other than illegal alien? What term is that kid supposed to use? The, probably what the libs want him to use is a term like an undocumented American. But he's not an American. He's a foreigner. And I'm sure he's got, some, he's got documents in his own country. He just doesn't have any documents here. We want you to use the phrase dreamer. Dreamer. I'm a dreamer, man. I have dreams almost every night. But we're not talking about me, right? We're, not, we're talking about a kind of a different thing here. Well, we want you to use the phrase future, future citizen, future Democrat voter is actually what they want to use. Well, we are just some euphemism, right? So the kid for his English assignment is using clear descriptive language rather than mealy mouthed prevaricating euphemisms. And the kid is being punished for that. The kid is being punished by his English teacher for writing well. That's where we're at in American education. Great essay, highly recommended if you're a teenage English student or, well, really, if you're of any age, called Politics in the English Language by George Orwell, in which Orwell describes how to write clearly and to write well. We want to use simple words. We want to use evocative words, not mealy-mouthed words. Good old Anglo-Saxon words, you know, not these kind of squishy Latinate words. And we want to say what we mean, and we want to mean what we say, and we want uh, an economy of language, and we want to be concise, and we want to be clear. That's what that kid did. And he's being punished for it. Our schools go in, and in sex ed, you're taught that boys are girls and girls are boys. That seemed, that's, that's not sex education, that's sex maleducation. You go in and you learn that America was an, is an evil, rotten, terrible country that was founded to promote genocide that was founded in 1619. That's not history. That's anti-history. You go in, you learn common core math, which is usually not math. It's kind of an anti-math. You go in and you learn that there's no such thing as truth and we can never know anything about truth. That's not philosophy. That's anti-philosophy. And now you go into your English class, you write well, and you get points taken off. And maybe you get a mark on your record. You get suspended from school. That's not English language. That's not writing. That's anti-writing. That's anti-rhetoric. That's anti-oratory. That's, that's going to make you dumb. That's maleducation. And the kid is being punished for trying to, to learn and to write and to speak well. I hope the kid gets off the hook. Obviously, I, if there's any way to, I don't know how to support him other than calling some attention to the story after Libs of TikTok did the same thing. Big problem. You got to pay attention to where your kid's in school. Because even if he squeaks by in this sort of thing, he's obviously at a terrible school. Whatever school district this is, the CD8 High School Spartans, I don't even know what CD stands for. That's obviously a terrible high school. And the teachers who who push this kind of stuff should be fired. Not not just because uh, they've transgressed some political line, but because they don't do their jobs well, because this English teacher is teaching students to write poorly. That's really bad. And education's going to stick with you. And if your kid is raised to have his head filled with a bunch of nonsense and to not even know how to use the English language, well, you, not only ha- has he missed an opportunity, but you've, you've actually set him up to fail in life. 
I feel bad for this kid. I feel really bad for all the other students at this high school who are obviously being failed in their education. There's a white student. Uh, I'm sorry, there's a group of white students at a high school in New Jersey who have formed a white student union. And this is causing lots of consternation among the administration. Collingswood School District officials and police are investigating incidents of racial bias, including the creation of a so-called white student union at Collingswood High School. Action News race and culture reporter Toronto Thomas is live at Collingswood High School with more. And Toronto students say kids in that club often racially harass other students. That's what they say. And high school administrators also informed the district that the students allegedly engaged in unacceptable actions. It was part of an unsanctioned club that students say called itself the White Student Union. It's been crazy in school, like, since probably like last year. But ninth grader Kimani Washington says racial incidents at Collingswood High School reached a new level recently when several students created what they call the White Student Union. I saw like a lot of different things in school. Like it was like racial slurs. Members of the White Student Union calling others the N-word. That's just one of the allegations now at the center of the investigation. The Camden County Prosecutor's Office confirms both they and the police department are in the midst of an active and ongoing investigation into the alleged racial incidents. Okay, so a handful of students form a fake club. It's unsanctioned, it's not an official club, called the White Student Union and everything melts down. The entire community goes into chaos. The, the local news are reporting on this. They're interviewing people. The administration's clamping down. The police are invest, the police are investigating? Why? Because according to reports, we have no idea of, uh, if, if this is true or not, the white students harassed non-white students. Okay. And if that's true, that's obviously very bad. To me, the more interesting news story, well, it's not a news story, it's never covered because it's just taken as a matter of course, is that this happens every day in the other direction with far more powerful people doing the harassing. The story to me is not three white students reportedly harass non-white students. The story to me is faculty and media and the governing powers regularly harass white students. Because this was a non-sanctioned white student union. But there are very much sanctioned black student unions at most schools around the country. Every university, at least, has a black student union. I wouldn't be surprised if many high schools have them now, too. And an Asian student group, and a this student group, and a that student group. What is shocking to me here is not that these kids seemed to be just like playing a joke. And, and maybe they did harass students and that would be bad. And maybe they did say nasty language and that would be bad. But this is all just a little joke. This is all just a little sideshow that has absolutely no institutional support. What about the AFAM organizations, the, the black student unions at every school that regularly promote absolute bile against white students that say that whiteness is evil, that whiteness needs to be abolished, that it's a call for genocide against white people, that, that regularly stoke resentment and envy that say that white people need to pay black people for some historic sin, real or imagined? What about that? Where's the news story for that? Where's the police investigation of that? I don't hear it anywhere. So what are the students doing? If I didn't know any better, I would view this little stunt as, well, either kids being just sort of uh, edgy and even somewhat idiotic as kids want to be. But at a basic level, I'd probably view this stunt as a natural reaction to the racial animus that is constantly thrown in their direction from every single power center. And it, it raises an important question, raises an important question over the kind of language that we, we ought to use in public life, cutting in all sorts of directions. What kind of language is, uh, obviously we don't, no one wants to uh, normalize the N word in public life, but you know what else? I think we should also probably kick out of public life, all this abolish whiteness stuff. I think that's kind of nasty. I think all of these attacks and insults against white people and against men and against Christians, I think they're pretty nasty too. And I think they ought to be discouraged. 
Maybe, maybe that question comes up. And maybe a question over the, the black student union. I had a friend in college, freshman year, nice, normal guy. Totally kind of suburban, just normal guy, black guy. And then he got involved with the black student union or whatever the group was called in college. And I tell you, man, by the end of college, this guy was Malcolm X. He wasn't really Malcolm X, but he was talking like Malcolm X. He had been indoctrinated into this very resentful kind of worldview. He didn't start out that way. He was, he was indoctrinated into it. It reminded me of the uh, New York radical feminists of the 1970s, where they would hold these meetings and they would take perfectly happy housewives and then they would convince them that they're all miserable and then the housewives would leave and they'd be just angry, screeching, shrewish women. <laughs> And uh, that, that's what these groups exist to do. So, okay, how come we can have a black student union and an Asian student union and a Hispanic student union, but you can't have a white student union? Why is that? Isn't that a little strange? I probably wouldn't join any of the student unions. Probably wouldn't join a union. But isn't that a little strange? How, that seems unstable to me. That seems unsustainable. And it is unsustainable. And, and as long as you keep pushing this stuff against white people, you're going to get more of these little reactions, these very modest little reactions. And the town's going to melt down over it. Okay, why? Why is the town melting down? What does that tell you about your own double standards? That was a great clip. If you want more of them, you got to ring the bell. Subscribe. We'll see you next time.